Across the globe, on the Pacific side of the American continent, is a place like no other. It's a unique panorama with arid deserts straight out of a Western movie and beaches with clear turquoise waters. Welcome to Baja California, Mexico. Surrounded by the Sea of Cortez, this stretch of land spans 370 miles and culminates with Mexico's gem, the municipality of Los Cabos. Forty-three-year-old Benoit has been working in this idyllic location for nine years. Les Européens connaissent pas Los Cabos. Ils connaissent plutôt Cancun, Playa del Carmen. Et euh, j'étais dans le même cas et je suis arrivé ici sans rien savoir de, de Los Cabos. Et ça a été juste magique le, le jour où j'ai découvert ça. The professional French diver worked as an instructor in the Maldives for several years. But here he discovered an incomparable ecosystem, baptized the Aquarium of the World by famous French explorer Jacques-Yves Cousteau. It's a sanctuary for several protected species, and particularly for the hundreds of blue whales living in the bay. The whales surface within sight of the buildings on the coast, so vacationers can marvel at them from their windows. After a few moments admiring them from the surface, the tourists strap on their oxygen tanks, ready to explore the seabed. On va se mettre à l'eau là-bas. Allons, où se trouve le bateau? Okay, let's go. Three. There is an abundance of marine life below the surface. After a few minutes, some surprise guests join the party. A colony of sea lions that have found refuge on the coast. Over the course of his 25-year career, Benoit has never interacted with a group of sea lions at such close proximity before. C'est très rare dans le monde de pouvoir avoir accès euh, à des, des lions de mer. Et là, on est à 5 minutes de Los Cabos et euh, quasiment à chaque plongée, on les voit jouer, on les voit chasser. Et ça, c'est une chance incroyable de pouvoir avoir accès à, ce, à ces animaux-là. But Los Cabos is much more than a simple animal lover's paradise. In fact, this Mexican municipality holds a very special place among the world's elite. Only a two-hour flight from Los Angeles, this small coastal resort has become the destination for some of the biggest A-listers in the US over the last 30 years. The likes of Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, and even Jennifer Aniston have all bought properties here. These are some of the most expensive villas on the planet. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, señor. Il y a quelques années, il y a une maison qui s'est vendue 40 millions de dollars. Los Cabos is a luxurious haven that attracts people from all walks of life entrepreneurs, celebrities, and also drug traffickers. Hillary Clinton, la secretaria de los Estados Unidos, y Joaquín Guzmán lo era. Eran vecinos. Alemania. Pareciera de película, pero ocurrió. For many years, the Sinaloa cartel has been controlling the municipality from their base on the other side of the Sea of Cortez. This strategic location is highly desirable for drug trafficking and attracts all kinds of competition. In 2017, a war with a rival gang turned the city into a bloodbath. There were hundreds of victims in just a few weeks. Los Cabos was crowned the most violent city in the world. This title was catastrophic for the region. The economic consequences were so severe that the authorities quickly had to react to the cartels and strike back. Today, the violence has stopped. Peace has returned to Los Cabos along with the wealthy tourists who feel reassured by the constant police presence. I'm really proud of the work that policemen do, that's why. Great. 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 Gracias. But these tourists stay in secure complexes under very high protection, where they are free to party without restriction. I mean, I definitely think that the... Re I know they probably put a special emphasis on safety for the resort, so... The city is divided in two. 
luxury on the one side and extreme poverty on the other, with entire districts controlled by the cartels. Is the violence in Los Cabos truly over? Despite the dangers, why are more and more billionaires flocking to a destination overrun with narcos? What is the secret behind the Sea of Cortez's coveted gem? Today, the biggest fishing yachts in all the Americas have docked at the marina Cabo San Lucas. In a few hours, dozens of millionaires are going to take part in Bisbee's Black and Blue Tournament, the most popular fishing event on Earth. There are several million dollars to be won over three days of competition. Reeling and dealing, they're gonna win right here. See, we got close last year. There you go. We got close last year. Here, everybody knows Wayne Bisbee, the organizer of the tournament. A decade now, if not a decade and a half, as the world's richest fishing tournament. That's our tagline. I mean, this tournament isn't just a fishing tournament that we created um, as a business. I mean, this was something that our father started 40 years ago. In the mid-70s, Wayne Bisbee's father and a handful of other wealthy American fishing enthusiasts discovered the plentiful waters of Los Cabos, and Bisbee's was born. Since then, what began as a small competition between friends has turned into a mecca for fishing lovers from all over the world and particularly for those with money. To enter the competition, participants have to pay 50,000 euros a day. In the registration room under the watchful eye of the police, mountains of cash are being counted and recounted. $300,000 for the next one down from that, so. It's at $3 million already, so it'll go to four. The 126 competitors are all very eager to win the jackpot. How are you? How are you? American businessman Alan Stewart is a regular in this competition. He has entered four boats into the tournament. It's $127,000 to be all in and to be across every bet that the tournament has. So, every year, every year. And we have our good luck charm. I'm just happy we have four. I remember for several years we had two. It's such a good start. Lost my right three days ago. He has won. <laughs> How much have you won from us over the last few years? It's over a million dollars. Over a million dollars he's won. We're looking for the overall. <laughs> That's the one we want. He's won big money from us in the past. In a few hours, they will all go fishing for blue marlin. The competitor that brings back the biggest fish will take home over a million dollars. The following morning at dawn, the first boats prepare to set off from the small harbor in Los Cabos. Wayne Bisbee is leading the cohort. Is it a good luck? Yes. yes. Good luck today. He positions himself in the middle of the bay to give the starting signal. You ready? There we go. Before the competition begins, there is a small tradition. A motivational anthem is played to bring the participants good luck. We did not play this song, and both times a boat sank on each time. So this song's very important to this time. This classic American rock music sets the tone for the three days to come. Holy criminy, that song wears me out. Amazing how much hardware and, and equipment is going to be on this start line. 
if you did the math and added them up, over a billion dollars of hardware to go find a fish. Kind of crazy when you think about it. I get goosebumps talking about it. It's just, it's just a neat, neat experience. Hello, sir. We're good. Good luck, boys. In Los Cabos, fishing is first and foremost a money-making pursuit. Three, two, one. You got to go. cock it. It's single action, George. There we go. The competition begins. Good luck, everyone. The yachts speed out to the open sea. They only have six hours to catch the fish that will make them even richer. At the rudder of his yacht, Canadian millionaire Brian Wiley is going full speed. It's like the start of a Formula One race in fishing. Having made his fortune in the business world, Brian now travels the globe to chase his passion blue marlin fishing tournaments. Ultra combative and up to four meters in length, the marlin is considered the fastest fish in the world, swimming at up to 50 miles an hour. It's the holy grail in sport fishing, but tracking this fish isn't easy, so these fishermen use anything they can to improve their chances. Fishermen are very superstitious. Some are more than others. Luis, a little more than others. <laughs> Me, not so much. Either gonna happen or it's not gonna happen. If this marlin weighs more than 150 kilograms, Brian could win the jackpot. Unfortunately, this fish is too small. At approximately 80 kilograms, it's well under the required minimum. It has to be set free. Okay, he's, he's undersized. Has to be over 300 pounds. That was not 300. A couple hundred. What's it, a good start? It's a great start. It's a great start. Brian and his fellow fishermen will compete tirelessly against one another in the hope of winning the million dollar jackpot. But Los Cabos isn't just a playground for wealthy fishermen. Hidden behind this reel of money lies another reality. The city is also the backdrop to a merciless war between Mexico's most powerful drug lords. In the mid 90s, Baja California came under the control of the leader of the Sinaloa cartel, Joaquin Guzman, alias El Chapo. He was long considered the richest drug lord on the planet, with an estimated fortune of a billion dollars. And it's in Los Cabos that El Chapo came to spend his vacations. Jorge Castaneda is a journalist specializing in organized crime. He has agreed to take us to the last villa occupied by the drug kingpin. For almost four years, El Chapo rented this 200 square meter villa under a false name. It is tucked away in this quiet private housing estate. It's a standard villa with a fairly modest interior. The drug lord discreetly hosted his mistresses here, but this villa was not chosen at random. Everything was carefully planned out to facilitate El Chapo's escape in the event of an attack. Y como puedes observar, este tobogán no solo le permitía caer en la alberca, sino también en su momento le permitió de cualquier peligro irse inmediatamente. Este tobogán da a la parte de abajo y de ahí pues tenemos un arroyo, una ladera y en cinco minutos él puede estar en el mar. Enfrente tenemos a Sinaloa, Mazatlán, Culiacán. From this villa, El Chapo ruled his Cabo territory with an iron fist. With no one to question his authority, the region was calm. But everything changed on the 8th of January, 2016. 
L'actualité à l'étranger maintenant avec la fin de cavale du narcotrafiquant le plus puissant au monde. El Chapo a été arrêté dans le nord-ouest du Mexique, dans sa région natale. After an extensive manhunt, El Chapo Guzman was arrested in Sinaloa by the Mexican government and extradited to the United States. Rival cartel Jalisco New Generation, the bloodthirstiest organization in Mexico, tried to use the arrest as a means to take control of Baja California. An extremely violent war broke out throughout the region, causing the deaths of more than 300 people in the space of a few months. Bodies littered the streets of Los Cabos. Journalist Jorge Castaneda was a witness to the cartel's barbarity. Donde acabamos de pasar ahí, este, tres funcionarios del sector salud fueron acribillados. Los grupos armados utilizaban eh, toda la zona de la carretera federal para eh, ejecutar y abandonar los cuerpos. En el tema del aeropuerto, cuando fue el punto más álgido de la violencia, es que eh, un fin de semana aparecieron cuerpos colgados en el puente justo donde dice bienvenido a, a los cabos. Tortured bodies suspended for all to see. The drug lords killed each other for control of the sales locations. But many civilians were also caught in the crossfire. On the 2nd of March 2017, a group of students were massacred in a popular public place. Ustedes observan esas cruces. Este es el mirador de Costa Azul, es un lugar emblemático de San José del Cabo aquí en las noches, en las madrugadas. Esa mañana, recuerdo que fue un domingo, encontramos los cuerpos tirados de civiles y entre ellos había un familiar del secretario general de gobierno de Baja California. In this extremely brutal context, Los Cabos was deemed the most violent city in the world. Although no American citizen was targeted, the U.S. put Baja California on a blacklist for destinations to avoid. Vacationers fled the city and investors got scared. For a region that primarily relies on tourism, this was an economic catastrophe. The authorities knew that they had to react, so they found the ideal candidate to restore peace and order to Los Cabos. This is their chosen candidate, 45-year-old Alvaro de la Pena, the Secretary General of Baja California. For three years, he has been working on the front line against the cartels. Que me han encomendado esa esa tarea de coordinar los esfuerzos de todas las instituciones del or de los niveles de gobierno para que podamos combatir y disminuir al máximo el tema de la delincuencia organizada sobre todo que es la de alto impacto. This mission has put him on the cartel's blacklist. He has already escaped several assassination attempts. Y no tiene miedo. Bueno, el miedo es una emoción que uno la tiene que controlar. Todos sentimos miedo, pero el tema es controlarlo y no dejarse llevar por esa emoción. This morning, he is being safely escorted to a fishing village that was struck by disaster last night. A recent bout of torrential rain caused a dike to break, resulting in terrible flooding. Several houses built near the riverbed have been destroyed and 13 people have died. Buenas tardes. To fight against the cartels, Alvaro de la Pena knows that he quickly needs to help these villagers out. If he doesn't take care of this problem, the narcos will. Para las al venir a decirles que no están solos, que después de las lluvias tan duras que tuvieron. Communities that rely on fishing to survive are regularly used by traffickers to transport drugs. Nos vemos, chavalón. Cuídate. ¿Cómo está, doña? Qué gusto verla. The flooding has ruined everything in this house. No, no sé. Venga, se pa' acá. The owner of this building no longer believes the authorities, who have been promising to do renovations here for months. ¿Cómo cree usted que queramos sacar provecho? Claro, no, hombre, no. Yo tengo 
mucho coraje, mucho coraje. Y voy a defender a mi gente qué bueno. y me voy a defender yo. Qué bueno, la felicito. ¿Por qué? A mí me gusta que la gente hable así, claro, ah, derecho. Y... y vamos a investigar a fondo la realidad porque no queremos que vayan a estar únicamente siendo rumores. Si no se lo pueden sacar, buscar congelarse. congelarse claro, claro. Due to the seriousness of the situation, the distribution of presents is more of a symbolic gesture. But Alvaro doesn't want to give the cartels the upper hand. Pues todo es una problemática y es va concatenada una con otra la inseguridad con, con la necesidad y es todo un mundo que está conectado en, en, en el tema de la sociedad. To combat organized crime, Alvaro de la Pena also needed to acquire the necessary military resources, and he has brought out the big guns. This intervention team is conducting drills in a desert on the outskirts of town. This new task force was assembled by the Secretary of Baja California to combat organized crime. This elite unit comprises more than 400 men, all dedicated to tracking down and arresting drug traffickers. Their speciality, storming and extraction. Alongside these highly trained soldiers, the secretary also schedules weekly discussion panels to coordinate the activities of all the different security forces. Military, Marine, Police, Intelligence. Among the participants is Julio Castillo, president of the Coordinating Council of Los Cabos. This organization was created in 2017, following pressure from powerful hotel syndicates concerned with the violence in the region. Its primary mission for the last three years has been to reassure the American investors. Nosotros cuidamos el destino, cuidamos que el destino sea viable, que sea que crezca turísticamente, que esté seguro, que esté ordenado, que esté limpio. Entonces toda toda situación que venga y amenace alguna de esas variables, nosotros nos tratamos de organizar y tratamos de ayudar a que esto se solucione. Thanks to these new military and human resources, the authorities quickly started getting results. In the space of a few months, the state police units hit the criminal organizations hard. A large number of drug traffickers were taken down and several cartel members were captured. Among them was one of the Sinaloa cartel's most lethal assassins, Margarita Calderon, also known as La China. She is responsible for over 150 murders. Secretary Alvaro saw her capture as an opportunity to commend his team's efforts in the media. These arrests put an end to the conflict between the cartels, restoring peace to Los Cabos. Now that the streets are safe again, the authorities are constantly on patrol. The American tourists find their presence very reassuring. Hola, hola. Why are you taking a picture? Sí, todos, todos. Because I'm in public safety and I'm really proud of the work that police can do. That's why. Great. Bye. Great. Gracias. Bye. <laughs> Although the wealthy clientele seems to be back for good, they now stay under extremely high protection. On the upper side of the city, ultra-secure residences have flourished. Isolated and protected, privileged vacationers feel completely safe here, never worried about Cabo's violence problems. In fact, their greatest concern is making the most of the market's best luxury products. This small dilapidated airport is situated a few miles from Los Cabos. At first glance, it almost looks abandoned. However, more than 30 private jets land here every day. 
They belong to billionaires, celebrities, American athletes. For Alexandra and Adrian, this airport is a symbol of hope for the future. The two Frenchmen have been living in Baia, California for three years. The two associates are here this morning to pick up two cases of wine arriving from Europe. They have been specially delivered via private jet. High-end wine is their speciality. C'est vos petits trésors, ça? Ouais. Bien frais, en avion privé, on peut pas faire mieux. Ça c'est des bouteilles, on peut pas prendre de risque. The delivery contains some of the world's finest wines, a couple of bottles of Mouton Rothschild, and one of the last remaining bottles of another great vintage wine. Ouais, super bon. Voilà. Scarecrow 2016, Magnum. Donc là, on est content. Bon, ça, c'est une bouteille qui vaut 3500 euros sur le marché. C'est des bouteilles. C'est pas tellement le prix, c'est que c'est impossible à avoir. C'est un millésime 2016. C'est vraiment quelque chose d'exceptionnel. Donc là, on a le mouton 2009, Alex. On est top. C'est bon. In Los Cabos, no product is too rare or too expensive for the clients of these two associates. On a une clientèle qui est très exigeante. Donc, euh, ils savent euh, vraiment ce qu'ils veulent. Euh, donc, il faut qu'on leur propose sur les meilleurs millésimes sur des temps de réactivité qui sont très courts. Là, on a une commande qui part d'Europe qui est à 100 000 dollars pour deux bouteilles. Ça tient. On y va. Ah, on, y on peut y aller, Alex. Alexandra and Adrian met just over 10 years ago when they were both working for large firms in Geneva and Monaco. Et ça, nous sommes Adrien, nous sommes Alexandre, nous sommes sociaux et ça, euh, manéchant d'où l'état, nous sommes en chemin pour pour vous. They each have their own speciality. Adrian is the entrepreneur, and Alexandra is the sommelier with an established clientele. Notre force, en fait, c'est de pouvoir rentrer dans ces résidences-là et de pouvoir avoir accès au majordome, voir certains propriétaires directement, et qui nous font confiance. To be able to live in these resorts, you have to be co-opted, like in a private club. These are some of the most expensive properties on the planet. Il y a quelques années, il y a une maison qui s'est vendue 40 millions de dollars. Euh, je crois que cette année, le record, ça a été plus de 30 millions de dollars. Donc même avec l'argent, il y a des fois où on ne peut même pas acheter une maison parce qu'il faut être invité. C'est des gens euh, très haut placés. Euh, à l'intérieur de ces biens, il y a aussi des, des choses de valeur. Et puis, euh, c'est aussi ce que recherche un, un, un client, c'est d'avoir cette sécurité et, et être tranquille à se dire que même si lui, il s'en va et qu'il laisse ses enfants à, à la maison, bah, les enfants sont en sécurité. Hola, ¿qué tal? Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, señor. Vamos a la vía Cocoma. Cocoma. Sí. Okay, Muchas bienvenido. gracias. <laughs> Mucho gusto. <laughs> this estate is comprised of approximately 20 cliffside villas. The two associates are here to deliver a bottle of wine worth 10,000 euros to one of their regulars. Yeah, 1990, a businessman from Brazil. His private housekeeper welcomes them in. Hola, Hola buenas tardes. ¿Cómo está? Bien. Mucho gusto, Adrián, Alexandre. Mucho gusto. gusto. Adelante. Muy bonita casa. Muchas gracias. Para comentarle este vino, eh, sería bueno abrirla como una hora antes, por lo menos para que se oxigene un poco y así va a estar en perfectas condiciones. Ok. Una pequeña joya. <laughs> This personal delivery gives the two French associates the chance to make the most of the stunning views at their client's luxury villa. It's fantastic. There are views that are magic. Every time we go to a new house or every time we go to a new place, we find that there are new landscapes. And here we are on the road of the baleines. It would not be exceptional to see a baleine now swimming. Each year, from December to March, hundreds of whales migrate to the warm waters of this bay. Just a few meters from the shore, it's the perfect haven to birth their calves. A few miles from the bay, the French associates have found their own little corner of heaven in Todos Santos. This hippie chic village was spared the violence of 2017. Here, art galleries and boutiques are springing up like mushrooms. The Californian clientele are huge fans. Adrian has already set up several successful businesses here. 
Donc ici, j'ai créé l'hôtel Guaycura. Ici, on va passer on a un restaurant qui s'appelle Chez Laurent, restaurant français. Ensuite, on a fait Il Giardino aussi. Il y a pas mal de choses à faire. On attend juste de trouver les bonnes personnes toujours pour travailler. Adrian has never experienced the insecurity issues that have struck the region, and he loves the timeless charm of Baja California. C'était le coup de foudre avec l'endroit et je voyage beaucoup donc en général je travaille sur des projets donc j'étais deux ans par ci deux ans par là et j'ai si un endroit où je peux vivre vraiment m'installer ça serait Toro Santos. The most recent venture that Adrian and Alexandra are launching together is a French delicatessen. For the past two years, the demand from their American clientele has been off the charts, but the renovations need to be finished in less than a month, and they are a little behind schedule. When do you think you can finish the other house that is still missing here? Yes, 10 days. 10 days? Yes. Here, there is something called Aorita. Aorita, it will happen, but we don't know when. We arrive, we will see the flowers, then the products of the shop, then the les viandes, ensuite les fromages, ensuite le café, le thé. On finit avec le pain et on passe de l'autre côté directement à la caisse. This project is Alexandra's first big business venture abroad. The decision to use Los Cabos as the main location was difficult for his relatives to accept. The region's problematic reputation worried them. Ah, ils avaient peur au début. Ils avaient peur, mais bon, euh, moi ils sont venus une fois, mais au bout de deux jours ils voulaient revenir tous les ans. Presque j'ai envie de dire que ça reste comme ça, qu'il y a encore cette petite, euh, cette petite euh, crainte de venir au Mexique, parce que si tout le monde arrive d'un coup, après, ça risque d'être comme Saint-Tropez maintenant, et c'est pas, pas ce qu'on veut. Now, with peace reigning throughout Baja California, the two associates are confident about the future. The American tourists seem to share this sentiment. The masses have been returning to Los Cabos ever since the government started implementing new security measures. Forty-two-year-old Zandrea has just flown in from Los Angeles. How are you? Hi, Elise. Welcome. She is visiting Los Cabos with a few of her friends, and they're ready to party for the next four days. We're here to have a good time. We're here to turn up. Some of us are moms. A lot of us are entrepreneurs. A lot of us just got amazing degrees, and so we're here to relax and have a good time. So you guys are going to have music in the car. You're going to have everything. Yeah. If you want to change the music, let them know. They're okay. going to be going to all of you. From the get-go, the hotel employees do their best to pamper the guests and reassure them. It's been really good business, it's been non-stop. The clubs, the nightclubs, uh, the bars, hangout spots, everything's really good. And we're, I mean, safety is 100% here in Cabo. <laughs> For 2,000 euros each, the friends are going to spend an all-inclusive long weekend at Hotel Rio, one of the many secure resorts built on the coast. Since the end of the 2017 conflict, this hotel is full 10 months out of the year. The giant complex has more than 800 rooms with all the necessary amenities offered on site. I know there's different restaurants. I know they have all types of premium alcohol. <laughs> and so it's a one-stop shop and we love it. I'm gonna go check out the pool. This is exactly what Zandrea was looking for, a safe and secure location that she won't have to leave for the duration of her trip. You feel safe and covered? Oh yeah, I feel safe. I don't, I mean, I definitely think that the, I know they probably put a special emphasis on safety for the resort. So I assume, and maybe this is naive of me that they would protect these type of establishments because that reputation gets out that you can't protect your guests, who's gonna come? You know what I mean? So money is business, business is money. So I definitely think that they take their safety very serious. Am I going off the resort? No. <laughs> In this serene place, Zandrea and her friends can now focus on getting ready for the resort's midday party, the pink party. Turn around, turn around. Turn, 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 turn it. Turn, 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 turn it. <laughs> why not dress in pink? Well, it's Cabo, so why not turn up? Okay, in pink. 
Giant pool parties are a popular tradition in Mexican seaside resorts, but in Cabo, they are a little different. This hotel is taking the narco aesthetic to the max. The guests are especially excited about the champagne guns. Jennifer is keen to get her hands on one. Foreign tourists know they have nothing to fear from behind the walls of their hotels. Here they can peacefully play with their plastic guns. In Baja California, the locals are the real victims of the narcos, and the cartels are a long way from loosening their grip on Los Cabos. In a small hotel on the outskirts of town, we were able to meet with a member of the Sinaloa cartel a former dealer who worked for El Chapo. We will call her Patricia. For obvious security reasons, she is asked to remain anonymous. Three years ago, Patricia was shot seven times by rival gang members when a score was settled with another cartel. Fueron dos balazos aquí en el pulmón, tres aquí en el brazo, y uno me salió por el hombro. Fue uno aquí en la cara, que me entró por aquí, me salió acá. Me volaron mi oreja, la tengo cosida. Y me pegaron aquí así, que hace poquito me salió la bala. After a week in a coma, the 28-year-old woman miraculously escaped death. Yo sabía que tarde que temprano me iba a pasar lo que me pasó. Despite all that she has endured, Patricia doesn't regret joining El Chapo's army. Thanks to drugs, she made a lot of money. Me propusieron el trabajo de que iba a trabajar de las 24 horas del día. Vendía hielo, que es el cristal, y vendía el original, que es el el que viene puro, cocaína. Pues sí, me iba, ganaba mi dinero porque ganaba por comisión por lo que vendiera. Y la verdad sí, al día pues eran diario 15,000 pesos. 500 euros for a single day's work. In Mexico, that's the equivalent to a month's salary. According to the ex-dealer, and contrary to official statements, the Sinaloa cartel's dangerous influence on Cabo is only getting stronger. Pues los jefes siempre van a estar aquí fuera de San José de Cabo. Porque pues el gringo el que viene a dejar el billete aquí. Pero aquí nos cabe hay bastante dinero. Es un es una cadenita que si siguen matando personas, la cadenita va a seguir siendo. La droga siempre va a haber. Y no nomás aquí donde quiera. This system is still perfectly intact. Gunshots may no longer be heard echoing through the streets, but drugs are still circulating like before. In the municipality's red light districts, there are dozens of nightclubs. At night, several tourists leave their secure resorts to party without restriction. It's a lucrative market for the cartels that control the area. The dealers work comfortably out in front of the clubs or on the sidewalks, despite the undeniable police presence. In reality, these police patrols seem to be in place more to reassure the vacationers than to hunt down drug dealers. In the background of this video, one dealer doesn't hesitate to give some cocaine to this clubber in public. When you look like a tourist, the dealers aren't afraid to approach you directly to offer you cocaine. What is it? Okay. 
we went to speak to a dealer working just outside the entrance of one of Carbo's well-known nightclubs. Yeah, but the police was here. No, no, it's no problem for the police. I paid the police right here. For me, I paid the police. This guy is, is not paying the police. The dealer starts a boast and explains that he bribes the authorities. You pay the police? Yeah. I smoke weed all the time. I don't have a trouble. Right? You want to try? You can try. You don't like it, you don't pay. What is it? This cocaine. There is no evidence that these dealers have bribed the police. What is for certain is that the cartels have adapted their strategies to continue working in peace. We head to a working class district in San Jose del Cabo. The cartels recruit dealers from disadvantaged areas like this one. There are many collateral victims from this trafficking. Every day, 45-year-old Socorro prays for her brother Alberto in front of the mausoleum that she has built for him in the middle of her living room. Amen. Alberto is a father of three and a mechanic who also laundered the cartel's money. He disappeared in April 2018. <laughs> Y lo único que buscamos son a nuestros tesoros, a nuestros familiares. No buscamos ningún culpable. Como dicen el grupo, no queremos saber cómo pasó, qué es lo yo solamente queremos a él de regreso. Making people disappear for good is the latest strategy used by the cartels to get rid of any loose ends without leaving a trace. Even though her brother worked for the cartels, Socorro believes he has the right to a proper burial, but the government is doing nothing. Is that sufficient? Courage, because the government no hace nada. Porque quieren tapar el el sol con un dedo. Entonces, lo que está pasando, al contrario, están callando los medios para que no comuniquen lo que está pasando. Mejor por el turismo. Entonces, hay muchas personas desaparecidas. Hay mucho these disappearances are also convenient for the authorities because they don't inflate the region's crime statistics. Every Sunday, Socorro goes out to meet a group of locals who have also had loved ones disappear. We head to the hills surrounding Los Cabos. This is where the cartels bury their victims' bodies. At the foot of the hill, Socorro joins a group of 12 volunteers, all of whom are close to the victims. The leader of their group is Ross, president of the Association for Disappeared Persons in Los Cabos. She lost her best friend almost two years ago. Since then, she has been in charge of logistics and organizing the searches. <laughs> y encontramos casquillos de armas largas eh, para checar si sí, probablemente encontremos una fosa por esta zona. Así que mira que aquí hay rodada de carro, ¿ya viste? Se vayan dos contigo y otros dos aquí con, en un puntito que tengo ahí. Vámonos, oh, Verde. To find out what's buried under these hills, the volunteers only have a few simple tools at their disposal. Shovels, pickaxes and metal picks. Their best resource for finding decomposing bodies. 
aquí nosotros pues lo olemos porque ya conocemos lo que es el, la peste de protofaltado, ¿eh? cuando el cuerpo está descompuesto. No es normal. Por eso vamos a hacer una excavación ahí. After several minutes of searching, hey, Martín. Martín. Ross and her team make their first grim discovery. Ceguetas trozadas. Estas son ceguetas para cortar. No hay ningún motivo para que esto esté aquí. Y se dice que se usan para torturar a la gente, cortarlas. Y pues al parecer esto se trata de, de, un, de un posible campo de tortura. A torture center out in the open air. In these hills, nothing is out of the ordinary. Each time the volunteers have a hunch about something, they dig tirelessly. But due to the vast amount of ground to cover, their chances of actually finding something are very slim. A little further on, the group finds a bone that looks human. The bone will be sent to a laboratory for analysis in the hope that it might contain the DNA of one of the missing people. Para nosotros encontrar por lo menos un, un rastro y darle paz a una familia es, es muy, muy, muy gratificante. Porque sabemos que va a haber una familia que ya sabe dónde está su desaparecido. Esa es la, la misión, encontrarlos como sea. Thanks to the volunteers' hard work, the association has already identified 500 bodies and has given many families the chance to mourn. In Baja California, the cartel's violence continues to cost many locals their lives, but this all happens discreetly in the shadows. Only a few miles away, the Bisbee millionaires are completely unaware of the types of horrors the poorer districts are facing. No American tourist is ever targeted in Los Cabos. These people only have one thing on their mind, catching the biggest fish of the day. Up until the last second, they try to catch the marlin that's going to make them even richer. At the Carbo Marina docks, there's a crowd eagerly awaiting the return of the first boats. It's time for the big weigh-in. The crew members march out onto the docks to show off their catches. They head to the scales, spurred on by the cheering crowd. Wayne Bisbee, the leader of the tournament, gets behind the mic to announce the results. We'll have to ask them how much money they've taken from us in the past, but it's been a few times. It's not the biggest fish these boys have brought me, but I think we're good. 260! Oh, damn. Dang it, we didn't make it. Beautiful fish, but it did not make it. Falling short by a meager 20 kilos, this marlin will not be counted. Now it's American businessman Alan Stewart's turn to return to shore. Is uh, Mr. Alan Stewart. He's from Lafayette, Louisiana. Fantastic owner, fantastic boat. There's a gigantic three meter long marlin out on his deck. We're good. Alan spent $130,000 to participate in Bisbee's tournament this year. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Everything's working out good so far. But we'll see what it weighs, but we're, we feel very good. Back up, right. Okay, gone. Back that up. Back up. Come on. Just push it out. Back up. 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 Bigger than 354. 
1.36 million and some change. <laughs> the weighing begins. Come on. 466. With his 250 kilogram blue marlin, Alan Stewart wins the jackpot of the day, $1.4 million. Happy, happy. He is going to share this enormous win with his team members. Thank you very much. Great tournament. Uh, 17 years with these guys. You know, been fishing it steady. So got very lucky today. But great crew, great people. Thank you all for hosting the event. And on 17 years, he's been with us. All the marlins caught today will be donated to a charity event to feed the city's underprivileged families. I actually never thought you could win that amount of money just by fishing a fish. <laughs> so it's kind of surprising, but no, it's kind of make me want to fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a wrap on the 2019 edition of Bisbee's Tournament. After three days of competition, it's time to hand out the prizes. The winners take their place on the podium. Despite the city's ongoing safety issues, a million dollar money shower hit the Carbo Marina this year. For Wayne Bisbee, this edition broke all the records. I'm stoked! Blown away! But the best year we've ever had. Three checks over a million dollars. Whether they're entrepreneurs or drug lords, the world's wealthiest people have well and truly found the perfect match for their bank accounts in Los Cabos, Mexico.